PK in the universe and I am back again with another video and today I'm here to talk about my Sega Genesis collection. Do you guys like Sega Genesis? Do you like hearing a guy talk about his Sega Genesis collection? Well then this video might be for you. Also I'm gonna drink a beer. Yes I haven't had a beer in a while on camera here. Uh, my son picked this out. Apparently my wife and him went shopping and there was like a four pack of these and it's called uh Candy Crushable Pale Ale with Lactose Sugar Added. 18th Street Brewery. 18th Street Brewery. I don't know anything about this. Um, yeah, it's brewed and canned by 18th Street Brewery in Hammond, Indiana. I've never heard of this. This is my first time ever having this, so we'll see if my son can pick things out. Um, clearly, he picked it out because of how cool the can looks. That's pretty obvious, but uh, anyways... Yeah, I'm going to drink some of this, you know, I thought it'd be the perfect uh, to create the atmosphere here is this is a guy drinking a beer, just talking with you good friends about Sega Genesis games. I mean, this seems like a good time, right? Right? Anyways, yeah, let's, uh, let's try this out. It's pretty good, actually. This is pretty good. I, uh, yeah, I definitely, it gets my seal of approval. I'm not much of a pale ale guy either, but I, I'm digging this. This is a good taste. So anyways, let's talk about the game systems I have first. First up, I got the Model 1 Sega Genesis. Yes, this is a Model 1 Sega Genesis I got for like 15 bucks at a Goodwill. And it actually does work, but I do not have the plug anymore for this. I had been like, I used to have a Sega CD and that plug is the same plug so you could actually use that. But I sold my Sega CD so I don't have the plug for this anymore. I think they make a new um, third party one now. I remember years ago they used to make one of those three in one that was for SNES, NES and Genesis 1 and it was total BS. It did not work with Genesis 1. In fact, I think it could fry your Genesis 1 so I never have used those but I think they make newer better ones nowadays I've they've been started making those over the last couple of years haven't tried them out don't still don't quite want to risk it so this is kind of just a nice little showpiece in my collection and whatnot pretty darn sweet yeah my, this is my model one Genesis this is the primary Genesis I use and that's my model two this actually I'm pretty sure is my wife's original model two because I used to have a model two and she has a model two one of them broke a long time ago, but I'm pretty certain this is her original Model 2 Genesis. So yeah, this is the one I primarily use. It's good, it's perfect. I really, I'm a big fan of the Genesis Model 2 because that's the one I grew up with and had the most nostalgia for. And obviously she must have the most nostalgia for since this is the one she grew up with. So yep, Genesis Model 2. And if you guys saw my video about uh, how my best friend sent me my childhood games you probably saw this in the video I didn't actually open it up but I showed the box and whatnot but yeah this is the Genesis Model 3 the Sega Genesis Model 3 I was so excited to get this man it's crazy I was like looking at the hookups that Andy gave me he was still playing this through RF or whatever that's hardcore that's real old school so many people in the retro gaming community now won't even be caught dead playing anything without AV you know unless it's like Atari 2600 or something <laughs> so I was like yeah that's a real that's that's hardcore I love it but uh, I do have of course the um you know AV cord or whatever and my son and I, we were playing Outrunners actually on this the other day. And I'm going to talk about that game a little later. But uh, yeah, Genesis, uh, and it's the uh, model MK1461, if that means anything to anybody. I couldn't tell you the difference um, between. There is two different versions of the um, so like Genesis Model 3. I guess one fixes that glitch that I guess there's a glitch when you play Gargoyles or something, I think. I don't know, but then it, then Gargoyles doesn't work right with it. But Gargoyles does work on here, and I'll talk about Gargoyles a little later. But uh, yeah, my Sega Genesis Model 3, pretty darn cool. I love this thing. I just love the design. It's just so cool and sleek. Yeah, it won't play Virtua Racer or something, but and it doesn't have 32X compatibility, though I guess there's mods you can do to get it 32X compatibility back. But yeah, so Sega Genesis Model 3, love it. And like I said before, this belonged to my friend Andy when we were kids. And we used to play it down in his basement back in the day. So, yeah, love this thing. Up next, my controllers. 
I have a couple of three button Sega Genesis controllers. I've always had these around somewhere. Uh, yeah, love the three button style controllers. Can't go wrong with those. A true classic. <clears throat> Andy Sega 3 came with some wireless controllers. Didn't know how to use those. I couldn't find a receiver for them or anything. Usually, typically, the Sega 3 comes with a six button controller. It did not, but I do happen to have a six button original Sega Genesis controller. And finally, I have this third party uh, performance Sega Genesis controller. This is an aftermarket. It says performance P041 gamepad made in China. You know, it's got this gray cord and everything. So, yeah, I've used this a couple of times. Works pretty good. Have no complaints. It's a good little six button controller. Buttons feel okay, they don't feel clicky. You know, this is an old school, you know, controller. I have a feeling it was probably made in like 1996 or something because it says QC96 for whatever that's worth. So, so those are my Sega Genesis controllers. Excuse me, gotta drink this real quick. That is really good, man. It has a good aftertaste. Can't say enough about this beer. So up next, we got some of Andy's games here. These actually fit perfectly in this little box here. Now, some of you guys watched my other video, so you might be like, oh, do you have anything new to say about this? Well, I actually do have some newer things to say about these games, which is why I'm bringing them up again. I'm not just trying to fill time or whatever. I actually have some different things to say now about these particular games. First up, we have NHL PA Hockey 93. I think I just called it straight up NHL Hockey. I don't and this is, of course, one of these bigger ones that have this little security thing or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what it does, honestly, but this is a long cart. Um, <clears throat> Earlier, I said I thought I had Bubsy, but it ends up I do no longer have Bubsy. I had actually sold my original copy of Bubsy on Sega Genesis you know, in a lot of Sega Genesis games a long time ago before I, when I had stopped kind of collecting Sega Genesis. So it's cool to have this back in my collection. Up next, we got the Menacer card that's a six-in-one shooting game. I didn't realize this was a shooting game, actually, and somebody in the comment section of the last video told me about it. So, yeah, I definitely need to get a light gun for this. And I don't know, do you need an original Menacer gun, to, or will a third-party one work? Um, if you guys know the answer, comment that in the comment section. I'd love to know the answer to that. So up next, of course, is the soccer game Marco. We talked a little bit about that in the last video. I used to actually have this, so I was glad to get this back in the collection again. <clears throat> Street Fighter 2 Special Edition. You know, I have a six button Sega Genesis controller, so that would be perfect for this. You know, typically I've never liked Street Fighter games, and I think a lot of that is to do with the fact that I've typically played it on the Super NES. And I just have never been able to, I've never been good at those games. I was good at Mortal Kombat as a kid, but never good at Street Fighters. So, which is probably why I'm not a big fan of Turtles Tournament Fighters for the most part, because it's basically a Street Fighter clone. So, but anyways, yeah, maybe I'll give this another crack, honestly. Now that I, I'm thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, I got a six button controller. Be great to play that way. Up next, we got Gargoyles. Yeah, this is a game that does work in the Sega Genesis Model 3, so which makes me think it is the one that the glitch wasn't fixed, maybe? I don't know. Because I guess apparently the Gargoyles game took advantage of some kind of glitch with the Sega Genesis or whatever, and I guess it was fixed in a later version of the Model 3. And of course, as you guys know, the Sega Genesis Model 3 was made by Majesco. It was an officially licensed Sega Genesis system, but it was, of course, made by Majesco. So, anyways, yeah, Gargoyles. Toy Story. Man, I love playing this game. I've played it before. I used to have it. Some people actually made a joke about, oh, Andy gave you all his toys away from Toy Story. I hope he didn't give away Buzz and Woody or whatever. And it's like, come on, guys. <laughs> I, didn't, like, I didn't even think that way when I was making that video. That never even dawned on me. So it's interesting what things people put together or whatever. You know, I, I love Toy Story. I love the original movies too or whatever. The, the last Toy Story movie, it was all right. It wasn't as good as the original first one. You know, nothing's as good as the first Toy Story movie. Toy Story 2 was pretty good. I don't even remember Toy Story 3 at all. I need to go rewatch these again with my son. I had a lot. Yeah, I really enjoyed the Toy Story movies, you know, especially you look at things just a little bit differently when you're an adult and you have a kid who's watching this stuff for the first time, you know. But, uh, yep, Toy Story. Can't go wrong with this game. Primal Freaking Rage, man. Now, this game is rated T for teen for a reason. It's very inappropriate. I remember 
I don't know why, but I just got this memory of, I remember there was like a move or something in the game where you could like pee on the other character and you know, there's these monsters fighting and stuff. This is a really weird game. Like a game like this probably would not come out in 2023. So it's, it's quite an interesting little novelty for sure. But uh, yeah, Primal Rage. And finally, the Game Genie. You know what's really interesting about this Game Genie? This is a black Game Genie. I did not realize this is kind of actually a little bit uncommon. I found that out because I was watching a Canadian Gamer's uh, video on his Sega Genesis collection. He did a little update collection video as well. And I was like, you know what? I think I need to do one of those myself. I've had an itch to do one for a while. I had a real itch to do this, so. Yeah, apparently he mentioned in his video that the black one is, I guess, less common or something, or it's a different variant. Now up next, my collection. Speaking of which, um, I do have the gold one. That's the one I have, so that's new. So it's cool that I have the black and the gold one. That's very neat. I don't have a lot of boxed Sega Genesis games, just a couple. I got Aladdin, of course. I actually mentioned this in my most recent video because I talked about how my wife had the original Aladdin on Sega Genesis and she, there was, she was really good at this game. She's way better than I do. She knows all the secrets. And uh, yeah, I'd bought this for her at TNT Games years ago before TNT Games closed down. So of course I have this game here and it's freaking awesome. It's Aladdin. Is it complete in box? Yes, yes, it is complete in box. Speaking of my wife, this is her original childhood copy of Sonic Spinball. And she left me like some notes and stuff in here. So I don't really want to show you the notes and everything, but I assure you it's complete in box. <laughs> the notes will fall out. It's like little mini notes, you know, type of deal. But uh, yeah, it's complete in box. Sonic Spinball. Not a big fan of Sonic Spinball personally, but you know, it's it's okay. It's better than the average pinball game, I think, but uh, it's it's a bit of fun, I guess. Up next, of course, I should have saved this for last really, but uh, it's my EverDrive, honestly. This is probably the primary way I play Sega Genesis games, yeah, as you can see. It's got a little memory card in it with a bunch of Sega Genesis games. I used to really like to play Sega Genesis games this way. In fact, I think this actually demotivated me from collecting Sega Genesis games for the longest time, but lately I've just been on a real kick to collect Sega Genesis games. There's just something different about putting a cartridge in. Yeah, it's cool to have all the ROMs, you know, right there that you can play on original hardware. I love it. I love if there's something I don't have, you know, if I'm like, hmm, I really want to get that game, but I want to try it out first. And there's no way to actually rent it because rental stores don't exist anymore that actually rent out Sega Genesis games. And Family Video closed in 2020. Yeah, COVID killed the video store, which is terrible. You know, I loved Family Video. You know, I, I took my son to Family Video. And, you know, which I can say, I can't say that about my daughter, unfortunately, because she was born in 2021. Um, but yeah, I loved going there. They had video games still. They were still running video games. I remember you used to be able to rent a Wii U. Yeah, you used to be able to rent a Switch as well. And yeah, and they closed down in 2020 because then they went to totally all, you know, online store or whatever type deal and just selling video, via, selling videos and DVDs and stuff like that. But, uh, Blu-rays, that's unfortunate. I got a bunch of their actual Wii U games from the video store over in Cary, Illinois. Um, like I got a bunch of Wii U games where I was like, oh my gosh, it was unbelievable as they were just getting rid of everything. And I wish I could have got some of those shelves. Oh, that would have been something. But it was like, you need, I would have needed like a truck. You know, I would have had to rent a truck or something. But I'm getting off track here. I'm getting off track here. Let's get back to talking about Sega Genesis games. First up, let's talk about Sonic the Hedgehog. This is my wife's original Sonic the Hedgehog. Yes, I have my wife's original copy of Sonic the Hedgehog plays great can't say enough about it you know you can't go wrong with sonic the hedgehog i do have another copy of sonic the hedgehog and i bet you guys are thinking i bet it's the not for resale version everyone has that right i actually have a kind of a unique one this is another one i think i bought at tnt games and that is sonic the hedgehog sega genesis this particular variant you don't see often this is typically what you see with like the mega drive and stuff um, the Mega Drive version looks like this, but th as you can see, this has a Sega Genesis logo. This is a legitimate Genesis game. I think the story is they used to sell these in like the northeastern part of the United States and maybe parts of Canada, you know, real in the southern parts of Canada. <clears throat> but this is, uh, yeah, this is a really cool variant. This is another game I got actually at TNT Games in Harvard, Illinois. 
it's a shame that place closed down. I really enjoyed going there, but uh, yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog. This is a really cool variant. I wish I could find the, the box. That would be really cool, but still, it's really neat to have such an interesting variant because you hardly ever see it anywhere else. Up next, we got Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Again, this is my wife's copy. I love Sonic 2 because I have a lot of nostalgia for it. This was the very first Sonic game I ever played. I remember um, going over to a friend's house and they had Sonic 2 and I never played a Sega Genesis at all and didn't know anything about it. And uh, so in the Model 2 and this was my first experience playing anything Sega related. I think I remember one point we tried to re we rented Altered Beast and you know what was really strange about all the Altered Beast we rented? Well, anyways, it ends up being it was the Japanese Mega Drive version. No joke. So it wouldn't work on our Sega Genesis. And I remember being so upset about that. They gave us a refund or whatever, but that was really weird. I don't know why they had the Mega Drive version. have no clue. But uh, yeah, Sonic 2. And of course, my wife's copy of Sonic 3. Yeah, she had all the Sonic games. Uh, Sonic 3. Gotta love Sonic 3. Of course, you know, and they introduced Knuckles and whatnot. And... Uh, Speaking of Knuckles, of course, I have Sonic and Knuckles. This was like, back in the day, this was like what DLC was back in the day, you know what I mean? And you can play Sonic 2 on here as well and get Knuckles unlocked. That's really wild. That's something I didn't even know until I was an adult. Like, I knew, you know, if you played Sonic and Knuckles on Sonic 3, you can get Knuckles, but I didn't know you could put Sonic 2 in it. I don't think Sonic 1 works at all. Then I got Sonic 3D Blast. This game, man, it's a bit of a hated gem, honestly. I don't know why. This Sonic game is so different than the other Sonic games. I actually kind of kind of think it's okay. I don't think it's a bad game. I remember there used to be a huge thing about, oh, this is a terrible game. And then when I actually tried it, I was like, oh, this is fine. I got this for like three bucks at a flea market when I was in California, when I was stationed in California years ago. And uh, yeah, I always kept hold on to it and I play it every so often. Up next, this is the one you guys may not expect that I would have, and that is Liberty or Death. That's right, Liberty or Death. I saw like a video, I think it was either from, it was either from Gaming Historian or Rue from Clan of the Grey Wolf. I don't remember. One of them guys was playing this game, I remember, and did like a retrospective on it. And I thought, that's really cool. I guess it's like the Romancing the Three Kingdoms type game or whatever, you know, it's a real-time strategy type game and there's a lot of like numbers and stuff you don't actually see like a lot of action it's like you know this is what happened kind of thing it has an insanely difficult learning curve but it's just kind of a neat one for sure i noticed like on the very back there was some kind of video rental sticker i don't know i just now noticed that this is the first time i'm noticing that it has been a really long time since i tried playing it like i said this has a really steep learning curve but it's pretty cool. Oh yeah, there's somebody's initials on there. CWV. CWV. I have no idea. I never noticed that until just now when I'm making this video. Isn't that hilarious? Yeah, but uh, yeah, Liberty or Death. If you've never played this, uh, maybe give it, give it a crack. But I'm telling you guys, it's difficult. It's really difficult. Up next, probably my favorite RPG on the Sega Genesis, and that is the original Shining Force. That's right, Shining Force. Shining Force, my first experience playing this game was on an emulator, actually. I played it at my dad's uh, at my dad's shop, and because they had, we had just gotten like a Dell computer. This was back in like 1999, I remember. It was a brand new one, and yeah, and I figured out how to like download ROMs and emulators back then, of course. And I think it was a couple years after that. But uh, yeah, this was my first experience, and I was like, I had never played an RPG like this. I had never played a strategy RPG. It was something else. Like, there was nothing I'd ever played quite like it. I'm like, and I remember I beat it, too, sitting there beating it. I remember just think, being so excited when I finally beat it. And I have this on other systems. Don't play it on the Dreamcast. The Dreamcast is the worst version of it. The sound is just so wrong and off. But uh, playing it on emulator is great. I have it on Nintendo Switch with that Sega Genesis collection. I think it might be on my PS3 collection as well. It's been a long time since i played that. Ever since I played that on an emulator, I always wanted to get a copy, and I did when I first started game collecting because I immediately remembered this game. That music is just so memorable. It's like, you know, burned into my brain. That music is just burned into my brain. It is... 
amazing. This is a great game. I haven't played the second one as much. I really should, you know, play try the second one again. I heard a lot of good things about that one too. I just never 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 felt the way about it as I do the first one. The first one is absolutely amazing. So if you've never played the original Shining Force, I highly recommend it. It's so darn good. Up next, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Hyperstone Heist. I used to actually have two copies of this game at one point, believe it or not. I think I ended up, you know, trading it in for store credit or something like that. I don't remember. I got something else for it. I don't remember what, but uh, yeah. TMNT The Hyperstone Heist. So good. It's on the Cowabunga collection now, so I guess there's really no point in owning this, but you know, I just, I like sometimes just to, you know, pop in that original cart. I love all that is TMNT. I have all the 8 and 16-bit TMNT games, all of them. I mean, I even have Tournament Fighters on NES, which is like one of the probably more expensive ones, but uh, I freaking love this game. You know, it's fantastic. You know, it's kind of like, you know, Turtles in Time, but it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. It's It's got its own little story, and uh, yeah, awesome game. Up next, of course, is Tournament Fighters. Gotta have all the 8 and 16-bit Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles games. Even though I do not like Tournament Fighters on Genesis or Super Nintendo, I actually really like the NES version. That's a, I don't know why, it's probably an unpopular opinion, but I prefer the NES version, but it's one of those, I just have to have it because it's a Turtles game, and I love all that is TMNT, so had to have this game. So one of the reasons I really started getting back into collecting Sega Genesis games, I'd been really into the Sega Genesis racing games lately. So I want to talk about my racing collection here. First up, we got Andretti Racing. Haven't played a whole lot of this. Um, what's really neat is you can play as a stock car or like an indie car type or whatever. And uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Here's a game that I bought online from that place called Game Room. Um, yeah, it's called uh, Test Drive 2 The Duel. I tried this out. I thought it was okay. It's one of those games where you play from, you're not playing from a third person. It's more of a first person perspective. So you see yourself like in the car. Not a fan of this one in particular. I think it's okay. I had a little bit of fun with it, but I wouldn't like, I wouldn't be like, oh yeah, this is one you gotta get. I cannot say enough about this game, and that is Lotus 2 Rex. Lotus 2 Rex. This game is pretty freaking sweet. Some people have called it a bit of an outrun killer, you know, and I do see that. It definitely has that feel of like outrun or maybe even um, Top Gear a little bit. And uh, it's a really fast game, but really freaking fun. You know, this is one of those games you get, you can, you can play for quite a while. And the nice thing too is it has its own like track creator or whatever, which is why it's called Rex. I can't remember what the abbreviation for Rex is, but they, the reason they wanted it, it's called Rex is to highlight the, because that's the name of what the track creator is. So you can actually create your own tracks. Yeah, Lotus 2 Rex. I didn't know much about the Lotus Car Company. It's a British car company. And uh, I, I'm not a huge, you know, knowledgeable about foreign cars at all here. I know a lot about American stuff, but I... I feel like I'm learning more lately about cars outside the United States a little more. And uh, this game uh, has got some pretty sweet cars. It's, uh, you know, the Lotus Esprit is the pretty popular one. There's a Lotus M200. The M200 is the go-to car with this game. If you want a really fast car that handles well, that's the go-to car in this game. So, uh, yeah, can't say enough about Lotus 2 Rex. Up next is Ferrari Grand Prix Challenge. Don't have a lot to say about this. Haven't played it much. Uh, I've played it a couple of times. Haven't really quite absorbed this one. Next, you got Super Monaco GP. And then the sequel, Ayrton Senna's Super Monaco GP2. See that there? Um, I got this actually at the uh, game store in um, Volo, or whatever where the Volo Car Museum is. There's a an Volo Antique Mall across the street from there or in, th in the general vicinity. And um, yeah, I got these two games for very, very good prices. I think it was either this one or this one it was complete in box or whatever. And it was like 20 bucks and thought about getting it. But these games were pretty cheap. I think they were like six or seven dollars each, something like that. Uh, I've tried both of these games, had a lot of fun with them, what I played of them. I haven't played too much and I still need to go back and check them out. This game was surprisingly really good. It's like this felt felt good like they felt like the, the handling of the cars were good it didn't feel like it was unfair or anything um yeah 
can't say enough about these games. They were pretty good for what I played. Up next, Outrunners. I got this for $15 on eBay. This copy is very worse for wear. I'm gonna do show you guys real close up what it looks like. Yeah. Somebody, it's like somebody like scratched the living crap out of it like sideways. It's like maybe it was a jealous ex or something. That's the story I like to tell. It's like some girl was very mad at her boyfriend. So she scratched the living crap out of this, you know, just took a knife and went like this, ah, you know, but 15 bucks for a game, you know, it's like that goes typically for like 30 bucks. I was like, you know what? That's worth it. That's worth the price. This is a game I don't recommend people playing by themselves. This is a game that was definitely designed for that two player experience. What I don't particularly like about this game is the fact that if you're only playing by yourself, you have to see the other player, the other computer you're racing against. You have to see their screen too. Now, some people have been like, well, it, you know, it gives you that feeling of like a uh, rear view mirror or whatever. I'm like, yeah, but since when is the rear view mirror on the bottom or you know, whatever? That doesn't make any sense. If anything, if it's a rear view mirror, I should be on the bottom and the, my mirror should be on the top. And who heard of a rear view mirror that takes up half the screen? Doesn't make any sense. But anyways, yeah, me and my son Jack have been playing this quite a bit or whatever. I told him actually I bought this with him in mind. So he was always like, I want to play this. I want to play this. So last Saturday we played this for a bit and we, I think he won like three races and I won like four, but, uh, and some of them, like one of those, one or two of those races, I definitely did not let him win. I just got really cocky, I guess. But, uh, and we were switching from different car to car. That's what's cool. This is like a two player version of Outrun, and there's a whole bunch of different cars you can pick from. So, um, but you know, there's the whole, you know, guy driving, there's a girl in the car, you know, and if you flip out, you guys can fall out, you know. It's made by a, is it, I don't know if it's published by, it might be published. I don't know if it was developed by Data East, but it was definitely published by Data East. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I don't think it's the best outrun game, but it's pretty good. And finally, this game, I do not have outrun on Sega Genesis. It's kind of expensive. Haven't found one for a price that I can stomach quite just yet, but I would like to get it at some point. I do have the Sega Ages version on Nintendo Switch. So if I really want to play OutRun, I can play that. I, obviously, it's not the same as the Sega Genesis version or even the Master System version, but it's a cool, it's a very good version. It's an arcade version, obviously, or, or is it the Sega Saturn version, I guess? I don't know, but it's, it's good. Can't say enough about that. I highly recommend checking that out. But uh, anyways, the final game, of course, is OutRun 2019. Outrun 2019. This game looked really rough when I got it. It looked really rough. It took a lot of work to get this sticker off. There was a big honking sticker right across this thing. And I got it for $11 from that game room place, that website or whatever, that that's retro game store in Omaha. But I did. I got that off. What can I say about this game? It is... Some people have called it an F-Zero killer. Um... And you know what? It's very different than F-Zero because F-Zero is just very unrealistic. You, this game, you feel like you're driving a car, you know. Some people have called it, compared it to like Top Gear 3000. And I, Top Gear 3000 has that same problem that Outrunners has where there's the two cars, you know, the two split, the split, forced split screen. I hate forced split screen. Can't stand that. Top Gear 3000 has that same exact problem. It's really annoying. And I feel like Top Gear 3000, I played it on an emulator. And I think the game plays like garbage, honestly. That's just my opinion. I feel like the control, the contr I just feel like too stiff. I don't know. I just didn't like it. This game, I freaking love, honestly. This is a game I'm absolutely enamored with. This is a fantastic game. Can't say enough about it. You feel like you're driving a silver freaking Batmobile. Now, this particular car is not the hero car, you know. This is the car you, the car you see on the side of the road. There's maybe three, two or three different colored cars you see on the road. Also, the cars look the same. This game is short. It's a really short game. There's like four stages total, and but uh, it's still a lot of fun. And there's different, you know, paths. There's a lot of replayability with this game, just like regular OutRun. There's a lot of replayability. You can take different paths and stuff like that. And, you know, originally this had a totally different name and then they got the OutRun license at the end there. And you, But you can very much tell this was inspired by OutRun. This is truly a futuristic OutRun. 
I can't say enough about OutRun 2019. I think it's freaking awesome. If you don't have OutRun 2019, definitely recommend playing it on an emulator or just playing it any way you can. It's awesome. It is a fun, fast game. Again, it's a game that's over pretty quickly. My first time ever beating this game actually was on this particular cartridge. I'd played it on my EverDrive. I played it on my uh, PS1 Classic, you know, because I, you know, because I got emulators and stuff on there and stuff. It's back there. But uh, yeah, my first time because I wanted to beat it on this. I wanted to beat it on a real cartridge. There's just something really great. It um, feels just feels right. I don't know if it's nostalgia, but it just feels good to play it on the original intended cartridge and beat it on that. But uh, anyways, so guys, that's my Sega Genesis collection. What are your guys' thoughts? Uh, what was your favorite game in my Sega Genesis collection? And if you have a Sega Genesis collection, what's your favorite game in your collection? Comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and stay awesome in this universe. Thanks. Bye.